Hello, hello. We're back with our next panel. This is the, the careers panel. These, these are the experts uh, to tell you how you can have a career in VFX and spend all your time, uh, you know, designing orangutans uh, or similar. So I have with me today uh, Philip Atfield from Creative Skillsets. Then we have uh, Gil James from, uh, I'm trying to find it, Invisible. Uh, then I have Simon Wright from The Mill. Hello. Uh, pa Paolo Cavalieri from Bleed FX. Hello. I have David Delve from ILM. Hello. Yes, got that right. Excellent. Uh, Henry Bull from Double Negative. Hello. And David Sheldon Hicks from Territory. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So, I'm going to chair this panel, but I would really, really like questions at any point. I'm going to keep looking around the audience while they're talking. If you can, like, put your hand right up and wave it, at any point I will take questions. I would like to just remind you there are no such thing as stupid questions, only stupid answers, and I'm not answering, so it will be fine. Um, they will be intelligent answers. So, um, so, at any point, if you have a question, please raise your hand. That's what they're here for. Uh, but I'm going to get things started, I think. Uh, just, uh, I've been asked to ask all of you, first of all, uh, what sort of, are you focusing already in, in an area? For example, are any of you th focusing on character work, animation, character animation? A sort of a half hand over here, a couple up there. Okay, um, 3D, a few more hands. Okay, compositing. Okay, a few more hands. Other areas? Generalists? <laughs> All right, okay. So I hope that helps you guys. 3D1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay, so uh, first, pretty basic question, I guess. What sort of educational background are you looking for in an entry-level VFX artist? Anybody? Whoever wants to start. Um, I don't mind kicking off. Um, I mean, in terms of what ILM look for, um, an educational background in terms of a degree isn't always mm. a necessity. So you don't have to get a degree um, in fine arts. You don't have to get a degree in programming um, to work at ILM, for example. Um, what I would say is that it certainly helps. Um, particularly yeah. if you're wanting to work overseas, having a degree always helps. Um, obtaining visas and work permits to go work overseas. Um, but certainly, industry experience counts for a hell of a lot more than a degree. Um, as I said, if you have a combination of both, fantastic. Um, but don't feel as though it's an absolute necessity. Um, I don't know how other studios mm -hmm. operate, but um, that's certainly what I would say. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I think for Invisible, it's kind of a, it's not an ILM sized company, you know, we, we sort of peak at about 60 to 70 people. Um, a lot of those people have done courses for all the different disciplines in, in CG and, you know, post-production. Um, and I think it's competence and, you know, sort of willingness to learn, want to learn, and also having the aptitude for <clears throat> an understanding of whatever discipline they, they fall in you know fall into so yeah degree is always good you know um, but at the end of the day I think it's it's down to the individual to really push themselves to find a way to you know to, to fulfill um, that role that they want to do so and more and more people are kind of teaching themselves do you know what I mean more and more people are using digital tutors are learning their own packages themselves and I think for us, it's how that's reflected in your showreel. Mm -hmm. So you can be super technical and super qualified, but if your showreel's not good, we're not necessarily going to give you that opportunity. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's it's all about kind of joining together with friends who've got the same passion as well mm. and doing your own projects. So you may be doing different courses. So there may be a compa, a generalist, uh, whatnot, really. You can get together and create your own projects. So if you've got friends who are keen, keen DOPs or editors, there may be some keen graders out there, whatever, get together and take on projects yourself and make sure they're really, really solid. And then show us that as well and show us that you can work part of the team. Mm. Being part of a team is a massive thing at, all of these studios, you're all working part of the team. So showing that through the group projects done in the past. Yeah, and having a real massive. passion for it. I mean, don't yeah. underestimate having a love and a passion for what you do. You know, I think that, that really kind of transcends through whenever we meet people Definitely. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, 
we had somebody in talking to um, some school kids yesterday, actually, and, and they were talking about the importance of things like life drawing and photography to establish a kind of an art base as well as the technological base. So, you know, is it important to be able to show that mix of artistic and technical skills? And if so, sort of how do you go about doing that? I think, sorry, I think it's really important to, to sort of know the both of them because, you know, I think issues from, um, you know, sort of beginning days of, of, of CG uh, in film in particular, you know, you had uh, a bit of a conundrum, which is you had animators in the traditional sense who knew how to animate and, you know, give characters weight and everything like that and no movement. And then on the other side, you had people that understood the technical side, but wouldn't really have an understanding of, you know, things like the movement and stuff. So now what you're getting is people that sort of, the, the two go together. And I think it's very important because you do have to have those, both of those, those skills are important in production because, you know, you're not going to get half the understanding of what, you know, your supervisor or the director is going to want if you only specialize in one, you know, it's kind exactly. of, it is a creative industry, but to, to, to kind of um, uh, create, create those wonderful images, you know, you need to have a bit of, um, you know, sort of a, a mathematical background if you want, <laughs> to a degree. Mm -hmm. but as, as I said before, it's not essential, but you have to have an understanding of both of them, I think. And I think something that we do at the mill for all our kind of existing staff, we have um, life drawing and sculpturing classes that we hold kind of, you know, every fortnight just to keep people's creative skills kind of up there for our established artists, rather, because I think that's really important. You can be, you know, the technical skills, obviously hugely important, but having that eye, having that creativity, yeah. looking at everything around you in a certain way to reflect that in your work, I think is equally as important. Yeah, definitely. For example, I believe we have this, uh, we specialize in simulations, so the technical stuff is very, very important because you, you, you must know uh, what to change uh, in the parameters of a fluid in order to get what the client or the director wants. So it's a very important to have a, a technical background in that case because it's too technical. I mean, you have mm. to change the surface tension of the water in order to make it look more sticky or something like that. So it's something that you must know. Uh, it's better to know that, uh, that thing. But it's always very good if you have an eye for other stuff, like the artistic stuff. It's very important because uh, otherwise you're just doing a technical job and maybe you can make mistakes because you don't know that maybe the camera is trying to move uh, to show something that is important for that uh, specific shot so you must know that because you have to uh, change the parameters or change the simulation in order to communicate what the client, the, the client or the director wants so it's a very good mix where does the training and the and what the person already knows stop so what training do you guys take on and then you know, if someone came in with a life drawing portfolio, mm -hmm. could they literally come straight in and you train them up on everything? Well, so, sometimes, actually, right now, the, at the start of this year, we started uh, lessons. We we're teaching lessons in the inside the company because we decided to uh, to improve the the technical knowledge of, of each our our um, our people. But it's not. Uh, it's not a must to go uh, enter the company knowing everything or knowing <laughs> something specific. You can just go into bleed and into bleed sounds very very bad. So just go into the company and you can learn. Uh, we can do some like um, like small courses for them yeah. so they learn how to do some specific stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's the way we we train. Do you them. see like a movement if someone came in and they thought they were going to be a compositor? Mm. Can you ever see where they might move completely over to CGI? Or character animation, or do you tend to see that it's it's a career career progression up through those ranks, or could you literally move someone right across? Mm, well, for example, uh, it's it's kind of kind of I know I don't want to say dangerous, but it's kind of dangerous. Try try to make a compose uh, of uh, one who is working in composition, trying to move all the way uh, to three D. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's difficult because mm -hmm. it involves a completely different knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people is very proactive and it's, they really want to know uh, more about the, the 3D stuff. So, for example, we have this guy who started as an animator. Yeah. Uh, he was very, he is very good at it. Uh, but he was very uh, interested in composition. So he told me, okay, I, I would like to, to participate in some shots with doing composition, so can you teach me just a few things so I can start learning for myself? And I did, 
he understood everything. So right now he's uh, in fact directing a project uh, about composition. So he was <laughs> he was very good at it. So there are cases if you have the energy and you have the courage, mm -hmm. you you must try to uh, yeah. know uh, and try to learn in other areas. But it's something that we we usually do. Yeah. For example, it's more common to be a three artist and became uh, become a uh, like simulation specialist, mm -hmm. more as, uh, around the 3D world. Yeah. But sometimes it happens that you start as a 3D artist and then you, then you move to the, yeah. to the compositing artist. And I think the approach varies from company to company depending on their size. Mm -hmm. So I come from a lot of um, training programs through the funding that Creative Skills Set has been putting into industry or in co-investing with industry. And uh, Double Negative, for instance, there's a, um, a strand of training which is multi-skilling, deliberately taking people and moving them from perhaps rigging into texturing. So yeah. there's a more flexible workforce in there. So that, that's happening. And on the subject yeah. of just yeah. new entrants as yeah. well, um, I think we've now got currently 63 VFX trainees placed, which again is going investment with industry. Um, and those trainees are they're training on the job in whatever areas the companies needed. So they've found talent through showreels and they're bringing them on that way. Yeah.